there are a lot of moving parts to this. Um, and so we're not sure if he's going to be able to do it. A lot depends on uh, the intra-caucus politics, uh, how the Democrats are going to take it, especially with uh, the DACA situation being the way it is, uh, which is completely unresolved. So there's a, there are a lot of balls in the air. Uh, but we're hoping that today Congressman Yoder uh, will be able to introduce an amendment, uh, or at least get an amendment voted on, uh, to get the per country bill into uh, the DHS Appropriations Bill for Fiscal Year 2019. Uh, Mr. Yoder, number two, amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise to offer an amendment. Consider it read and you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To my fellow members of the committee, I want to thank everyone for entertaining this amendment, which has become a very personal issue for my constituency. My amendment to this bill would make a change in law to clear out the backlog in the employment-based green card line by adding language commonly known as the Fairness for High-Skilled Immigrants Act. The language eliminates the per-country caps uh, for those visas. This is language that passed the House in the 112th Congress, 389 to 15, and which has since been well supported. I assumed sponsorship of this when Mr. Chaffetz left office earlier this Congress, and the bill which my amendment is based on now enjoys the bipartisan support of 326 members of Congress, 75% of the House, 77% of this committee has co-sponsored the bill. Uh, I'd like to talk to the other 23% at some point. Uh, currently, there exists an arbitrary cap of 7% from any single country, creating a huge disparity against immigrants who arrive in the United States from countries with large populations, I'm talking about H-1B high-skilled immigrants. This greatly impacts many of our Chinese and Indian constituents. Their population accounts for 40% of the world, and they make up a disproportionately large share of the high-skilled global workforce. Right now, as many as more than 1 million Indian immigrants are here on high-skilled visas, and they're stuck waiting decades in line for a green card, up to 70 years in some cases. The message we send to them is if they want to keep their skills in America and build prosperity, they must wait in an exceptionally long line. This is one of the clearest examples where our legal immigration system is broken. The policy before you does not increase the amount of green cards, does not change the total amount of green cards that are offered. It just allows it to order in a first-come, first-served basis by eliminating the per-country cap. Now, before I yield to other members to speak, I want to give special recognition to Sunaina Damala, who is visiting Washington, D.C. today from my district in Kansas and has joined us in the markup. Much of my inspiration on this, in addition to just being good policy, has been driven by the horrible hate crime perpetrated against her husband, Srinivas Kuchibola. As members of this committee may know, Sunaina lost her husband to the victim of a hate crime when a hateful American took his life last year. When she lost her husband, as if the pain were not enough, she also lost her legal status in the country. And her status was tied to her husband's H-1B visa. At the time, my office worked closely to ensure that her status here in this country could be fixed. And since this horrible crime was committed against Sunaina and Srinu, she has become an inspiration and is an outspoken advocate for this legislation. We're so proud to have her here today, and I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. Mr. Chairman, without this fix, Sunaina will very likely never become an American citizen. She is in a backlog decades and decades long. She's here on an H-1B uh, high-skilled visa, uh, and yet uh, her backlog may make it so that she can never become a United States citizen. Yet someone born today in almost any other country around the world, save for China or India, someone born today can go through school, go through higher education, can come to America 30, 40, 50 years from now on a high-skilled H-1B visa and still get in line before Sunaita Damala because she happens to be from India. Mr. Chairman, that's discriminatory, it's wrong, it's unjust, and we have a chance here today in this committee in a bipartisan way to put a stop to that uh, and to make this a first-come, first-served basis and to quit this horrible discriminatory practice and to stand up for, for the Sunaita Damalas of, of this country uh, who, who so desperately want to be treated fairly under this system. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance. Thank the gentleman for his uh, amendment. Let me just clarify, this is Yoder Amendment Number 3. I think that this has the support of uh, the vast majority of Americans, 75% of Congress. It's the right thing to do. Uh, it's the fair thing to do, and I ask for your support. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance of my right, The question is on the Yoder Amendment, the Chairman's Amendment. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say nay. 
the opinion of the chair, the, the eyes have it, the amendment is agreed to.